Peter I, Russian in full Pyotr Alexeyevich, by name Peter the Great, Russian Pyotr Veliki, born June 9, May 30, Old Style, 1672, Moscow, Russia, died February 8, January 28, 1725, St. Petersburg, Tsar of Russia who reigned jointly with his half-brother Ivan V, 1682-96 and alone thereafter, 1696-1725, and who in 1721 was proclaimed Emperor, Imperator. He was one of his country's greatest statesmen, organizers, and reformers. Peter was the son of Tsar Alexis by his second wife, Natalia Kirilovna Narishkina. Unlike his half-brothers, sons of his father's first wife, Maria Linika Miloslavskaya, Peter proved a healthy child, lively and inquisitive. It is probably significant to his development that his mother's former guardian, Artemin Sergeyevich Matveya, had raised her in an atmosphere open to progressive influences from the West. When Alexis died in 1676, Peter was only four years old. His elder half-brother, a sickly youth, then succeeded to the throne as Fyodor III, but, in fact, power fell into the hands of the Miloslavskis, relatives of Fyodor's mother, who deliberately pushed Peter and the Narishkin circle aside. When Fyodor died childless in 1682, a fierce struggle for power ensued between the Miloslavskis and the Narishkins, the former wanted to put Fyodor's brother, the delicate and feeble-minded Ivan V, on the throne, the Narishkins stood for the healthy and intelligent Peter. Representatives of the various orders of society, assembled in the Kremlin, declared themselves for Peter, who was then proclaimed Tsar, but the Miloslavsky faction exploited a revolt of the Moscow Streltsy, or musketeers of the sovereign's bodyguard, who killed some of Peter's adherents, including Matveya. Ivan and Peter were then proclaimed joint Tsars, and eventually, because of Ivan's precarious health and Peter's youth, Ivan's 25-year-old sister Sophia was made regent. Clever and influential, Sophia took control of the government, excluded from public affairs, Peter lived with his mother in the village of Priobrzensky, near Moscow, often fearing for his safety. All this left an ineradicable impression on the young Tsar and determined his negative attitude toward the Streltsy. One result of Sophia's overt exclusion of Peter from the government was that he did not receive the usual education of a Russian Tsar, he grew up in a free atmosphere instead of being confined within the narrow bounds of a palace. While his first tutor, the former church clerk Nikita Zotov, could give little to satisfy Peter's curiosity, the boy enjoyed noisy outdoor games and took a special interest in military matters, his favorite toys being arms of one sort or another. He also occupied himself with carpentry, joinery, blacksmith's work, and printing. When Alexis died in 1676, Peter was only four years old. His elder half-brother, a sickly youth, then succeeded to the throne as Fyodor III, but, in fact, power fell into the hands of the Miloslavskis, relatives of Fyodor's mother, who deliberately pushed Peter and the Narishkin circle aside. When Fyodor died childless in 1682, a fierce struggle for power ensued between the Miloslavskis and the Narishkins, the former wanted to put Fyodor's brother, the delicate and feeble-minded Ivan V, on the throne, the Narishkins stood for the healthy and intelligent Peter. Representatives of the various orders of society, assembled in the Kremlin, declared themselves for Peter, who was then proclaimed Tsar, but the Miloslavsky faction exploited the revolt of the Moscow Streltsy, or musketeers of the sovereign's bodyguard, who killed some of Peter's adherents, including Matveya.
Ivan and Peter were then proclaimed joint czars, and eventually, because of Ivan's precarious health and Peter's youth, Ivan's 25-year-old sister Sophia was made regent. Clever and influential, Sophia took control of the government, excluded from public affairs, Peter lived with his mother in the village of Preobrazensky, near Moscow, often fearing for his safety. All this left an ineradicable impression on the young Tsar and determined his negative attitude toward the Streltsy. One result of Sofia's overt exclusion of Peter from the government was that he did not receive the usual education of a Russian Tsar, he grew up in a free atmosphere instead of being confined within the narrow bounds of a palace. While his first tutor, the former church clerk Nikita Zotov, could give little to satisfy Peter's curiosity, the boy enjoyed noisy outdoor games and took a special interest in military matters, his favorite toys being arms of one sort or another. He also occupied himself with carpentry, joinery, blacksmith's work, and printing. In August 1689 a new revolt of the Streltsy took place. Sophia and her faction tried to use it to their own advantage for another coup d'état, but events this time turned decisively in Peter's favor. He removed Sophia from power and banished her to the Novodovichy convent, she was forced to become a nun after a Streltsy rebellion in 1698. Though Ivan V remained nominally joint Tsar with Peter, the administration was now largely given over to Peter's kinsmen, the Nerishkins, until Ivan's death in 1696. Peter, meanwhile continuing his military and nautical amusements, sailed the first seaworthy ships to be built in Russia. His games proved to be good training for the tasks ahead. Peter was of enormous height, more than six and one-half feet, two meters, tall, he was handsome and of unusual physical strength. Unlike all earlier Russian czars, whose Byzantine splendors he repudiated, he was very simple in his manners, for example, he enjoyed conversation over a mug of beer with shipwrights and sailors from the foreign ships visiting St. Petersburg. Restless, energetic, and impulsive, he did not like splendid clothes that hindered his movements, often he appeared in worn-out shoes and an old hat, still more often in military or naval uniform. He was fond of merrymaking and knew how to conduct it, though his jokes were frequently crude, and he sometimes drank heavily and forced his guests to do so too. A just man who did not tolerate dishonesty, he was terrible in his anger and could be cruel when he encountered opposition, in such moments only his intimates could soothe him, best of all his beloved second wife, Catherine, whom people frequently asked to intercede with him for them. Sometimes Peter would beat his high officials with his stick, from which even Prince A.D. Menshikov, his closest friend, received many a stroke. One of Peter's great gifts of statesmanship was the ability to pick talented collaborators for the highest appointments, whether from the foremost families of the nobility or from far lower levels of society. As a ruler, Peter often used the methods of a despotic landlord, the whip and arbitrary rule. He always acted as an autocrat, convinced of the wonder-working power of compulsion by the state. Yet with his insatiable capacity for work he saw himself as the state's servant, and whenever he put himself in a subordinate position he would perform his duties with the same conscientiousness that he demanded of others. He began his own army service in the lowest rank and required others likewise to master their profession from its elements upward and to expect promotion only for services of real value. 
Peter's personality left its imprint on the whole history of Russia. A man of original and shrewd intellect, exuberant, courageous, industrious, and iron-willed, he could soberly appraise complex and changeable situations so as to uphold consistently the general interests of Russia and his own particular designs. He did not completely bridge the gulf between Russia and the Western countries, but he achieved considerable progress and development of the national economy in trade, education, science and culture, and foreign policy. Russia became a great power, without whose concurrence no important European problem could thenceforth be settled. His internal reforms achieved progress to an extent that no earlier innovator could have envisaged. 